Alrighty, rail fans, welcome back to another edition of Fallen Flags of America. So as you can see here, or hopefully you can see, by today's picture we will be covering the Union Pacific GTEL, known also as the Gas Turbine Electric Locomotive, or simply the Big Blow. So this is a scale train's representation of what the Big, what the big Blow looked like, and uh... These things were incredibly powerful, to say the least, as you will discover when listening to this program. So thank you for tuning in to another edition of Fallen Flags of America. Now let's get into the show. So, the Union Pacific GTLs, or Big Blows, were a series of gas turbine electric locomotives built cooperatively by Alco General Electric, Alco and General Electric between 1952 to 1961, and operated on Union Pacific from the early 50s to the early 70s. Background. The Union Pacific operated the largest fleet of gas electric turbines, turbine locomotives, or GTELs, of any railroad in the world. The prototype, Union Pacific No. 50, was the first in a series built by General Electric for Union Pacific's long-haul cargo and marketed by Alco GE Partnership until 1953. The prototype was introduced in 1948 and was followed by three series of production locomotives. At one point, Union Pacific said the GTLs hauled more than 10% of the railroad's freight. Fuel economy was poor, for the turbine consumed roughly twice as much fuel as an equally powerful diesel engine. This was, in, this was intentionally not a problem because Union Pacific's turbines burned Bunker C heavy fuel that was less expensive than diesel. This but this highly vicious of this cautious fuel was difficult to handle for room temperature consistency similar to tar and molasses. To solve this problem, a heater was built into the fuel tanks and later into fuel tenders to heat, heat the fuel to 200 degrees Fahrenheit or 93 degrees Celsius before feeding it into the turbine. Eventually, UP switched from Bunker C to modified No C heavy fuel oil, which contained fewer pollutants and solvents. Sot buildup and blade erosion was caused by corrosive ash plagued all the turbines. Changes to the air intake systems on the production turbine locomotives improved the quality of air that reached the turbines, which in turn, the final two numbers, number 18 and 26, restored at the Cheyenne Roundhouse in operating condition until being retired in February 1970. Both were sent to museums. Prototype. The Union Pacific had sought the biggest and best locomotives. In the 1930s, a pair of steam turbine locomotives were tried but rejected. Shortly before, before World War II, Union Pacific had been adding diesels to its roster, but none pulled road freight trains. The idea of using four diesels to power the, to the power of a steam locomotive was unappealing, so the search began for something bigger. General Electric had been building gas turbines for aircraft and proposed using something similar on a locomotive. Union Pacific thought maintenance costs for a locomotive were largely independent of its power, so a smaller number of more powerful turbine locomotives would save money. Union Pacific decided the best way for the turbine locomotives to realize their potential would be to put them on mainline freight trains. Long runs and relatively high speeds would maximize the turbine's efficiency. After Union Pacific expanded interest, General Electric, or GE, built a prototype, number 101, completed in November 1948. After testing the Northeast during June 1949, it was renumbered to UP-50. Painted in UP's armor yellow, UP-50 began, began a round of test. Union Pacific never took ownership of this locomotive, however, it was one of the few internal combustion locomotives in North America that had a cab at each end. The cabs themselves resembled the FA units being built by Alco GE at the time. The sides of the locomotive had numerous air intake louvers that could be opened and closed in varying patterns. UP-50 was a car body BBB, or triple B, wheel arrangement, two four axles with pairs connected by spam, bo spam bo boosters. Blosters. The turbine produced 4,800 horsepower, or 3.6 megawatts, 
of which 4,500 horsepower or 34.3.4 megawatts was available for traction. This power was out, output was more than double that of the diesel electric units of the time. For starting, for starting, the unit's auxiliary diesel generator would power a set of windings and the gas turbine's main generator, causing the generator to rotate. The generator's rotation would begin to spin the turbine, at which point diesel fuel would be used to start a combustion. A steam generator would heat and liquefy the turbine's, the turbine's primary fuel supply, heavy bunker C oil, when the turbine and, and fuel oil reach their maximum operating temperatures, the fuel of a turbine would be switched from diesel to primary fuel. This machine weighed 500,000 pounds, or 230,000 kilograms, and was over 80 feet long, or 24, I guess that means millimeters long. The turbines were delivered in, main, in three main groups after extensive testing of the prototype. Union Pacific intended to use the star turbines to replace its 4884 Big Boy locomotives, which are scheduled to be taken out of service. The first generation, from January 1952 to August of 1953, Union Pacific received units 51 through 60, like the prototype of a cab at only one end to increase fuel capacity. Each cost for the unit was $540,000. The unit frame carried 7,200 U.S. gallons, or 27,000 liters of fuel. The GTLs initially pulled freights between Ogden, Utah, and Green River, Green River Wyoming, passing through Weber Canyon and Echo Canyon, Utah. In 1954, they began running Ogden to Laramie and soon after Ogden to Cheyenne. In 1955 and 56, 24,000 U.S. gallon or 91,000 liter fuel tenders were added behind the turbines, allowing them to run as far as Council Bluffs, Iowa. UP 53 was used to number 53 was used to test test improved roof and improved roof mounted air air intake. Which, which proved successful, and locomotives 57 through 60 were built with this intake. In May 1953, Union Pacific 57 was converted to operate on propane, using a pressurized tank car as a tender. This fuel burned cleanly and didn't foul the turbine blades, as Bunker C oil did, but, did, but was more effective to transport, and there were safety concerns. More difficult. The project ended in January 1954 and Union Pacific 57 was converted back to Bunker C oil. No other conversions were done. Union Pacific 59 and 60 were, were used in an experimental 9,000 horsepower or, set, or 6,700 kilowatt double turbine pair sharing a fuel tender between them. The trailing turbine sometimes flamed out in tunnels. Despite modifications to minimize these difficulties, the experiment was discontinued in favor of running additional lo diesel locomotives with the turbines. The first generation turbines were retired by June of 1964. The second generation turbines. Units 61 to 75 were delivered beginning in 1954. The outside walkways along the flanks earned it the nickname Verenda and made it into a hybrid of car body and hood locomotives. The turbine and electrical equipment were about the same, although the side louver air intakes were replaced by, large roof mount, uh, by the large roof mount air intake first tested on 53. 61 was used in multiple unit control tests with diesel starting in 1958. These tests were successful and eventually all but six of the 4,500 horsepower or 3,000 400 kilowatt GTLs were equipped to run with diesels. As tonnage requirements increased, increased trailing diesel locomotives on, on multiple unit operation became more commonplace. The Verena turbines were retired between August of 1963 and June of 1964. And finally, we get to the third generation turbines. In 1955, Union Pacific ordered a new turbine electric, the world's most powerful locomotive. Each would be two units plus a fuel tender rated at 8,500 horsepower. 
The A unit controlled the control cab and an auxiliary diesel engine generator. The B unit carried the turbine and main generators to provide electricity to the traction motors on both the A and B units. The turbine was a new design, a GE fra frame 5 simple simple cycle gas turbine with a 16-stage compressor, 10 combustion chambers, and a two-stage turbine. No steam generator was needed to heat and liquefy Bunker C fuel because the tenders were insulated. The original plan was to number these units in the 75 7000 series, but they were renumbered to, from 1 to 30. They were delivered to Union Pacific between August of 1958 and June of 1961. These units were very different from previous generations, having a wheel range of CC on each of their units, not including their tenders. The locomotive weighed in at about six, 600, 610 tons with a fuel tender. Continuous tractive effort was 146,000 pounds, or 66,000 kilograms, with a 65 mile per hour, or 105 kilometer per hour, 74, 74 18 gearing and 1961 tonnage ratings were 6,740 on the 0.82% climb west from Cheyenne and 5,180 5, on the 1.14 east from Ogden. These tur the turbines in these units were, are the most powerful prime movers ever installed on any North American locomotive. With 8,500 horsepower or 6,300 kilowatts from a single prime mover, these engines, these engines set a record that still stands. That rating was climbed to be at 6,000 6, foot or 1,800 miles altitude and 90, 90, 90 degrees Fahrenheit or 32 degrees Celsius. And in cooler, denser air, the turbine itself could exceed 10, 10,000 horsepower or 7,500 kilowatts if the electrical system could handle it. In 1963, Trains Magazine wrote the biggest, the big 8,500 8, horsepower jobs remain under constant scrutiny as Union Pacific jacks some of them up to 10,000 horsepower ratings, considers motorizing their fuel tenders with traction motors. Lee's book explains that Union Pacific re Resetting generator exhalation to absorb the higher rating, but wheels were motor, but but only on a test. The motorized tender sounds unlikely, although trains mention that the turbine's four-month trial to Los Angeles in 1962 ended when tender wheels were motorized, imposing speed restriction. The 61, the 1961-63 timetable show a 65 mile per hour or 105 kilometer per hour limit for all the turbines. These turbines were eventually displaced units 51 to 75. There had been problems with fuel filters clogging in the earlier turbines, so it was decided to filter the fuel before filling, filling the, locomo the locomotive fuel tanks in the tender. Unlike the earlier turbines, the 8,500 horsepower or 6,300 kilowatts Turbines came with a 24,000 U.S. gallon or 91,000 liter fuel tenders. In addition to the 2,500 U.S. gallon or 9,500 liter of diesel fuel in the locomotive, they also came equipped with Leslie S5 TRF horns on the cab roof, later moved to the, to the mid-rear section of the A unit in response to ice buildup in the bells. The third generation turbines were all retired by 1970. Retirement. Bunker C's cost average waned as the, as the plastics industry began to, began to find uses for it and improved cracking techniques allowed the oil, previously considered waste, to be converted to lighter fuel grades. The last run of a gas turbine locomotive took place on December 26, 1969. Their running gear was recycled into the U-50 series of locomotives. Trucks, traction motors, and span boosters from locomotives 51 to 75 were used in construction of the U-50, and trucks and traction motors from locomotives in the 1 to 30 series were used in construction of the U-50C. Several of the tenders retained and, co retained and converted to hold water for maintenance of purposes 
and would later be used for Union Pacific's operating steam locomotives, such as Union Pacific 844, Union Pacific 3985, retired last year, and Union Pacific 4014. The prototype, the first generation second ger and second generation turbines were all scrapped by 1964, with none left for preservation. Two third generation term turbines were preserved, UP-18 at the Illinois, State R Illinois Railway Museum and UP-26 at the Utah State Railroad Museum in Ogden, Utah. UP-18's tender, number 907853, built in 1937, had a long history, built first for use with UP, U, UP's FEF series steam locomotives before conversion to turbine use. It served as a water tender from the 1970s to 1984 for trains such as the Expo 74 and American Freedom Train before being donated to the Kansas Railroad Museum and then acquired by the RRM. Neither of the turbines are reported to be in operable condition nor are planned to be restored. Experimental Coal Burning Turbine In October 1962, the Union Pacific constructed an experimental GTL of its own using a modified Alco PA cab, PA1 cab as the chassis of a GN W1 class electric locomotive, bought for, bought for scrap from the Great Northern Railway as the second unit and a modified turbine prime mover removed from one of the 50-70 series locomotives. The consist had an had an A one A A one A two D two two minus two wheel arrangement, eighteen axles of of which twelve were powered. The PA's two thousand horsepower or one point five megawatt diesel engine was retained, and the B unit carried the main power plant for the main generators, which contributed five thousand horsepower or three point seven megawatts for a total power output of 7,000 horsepower, or 5.2 megawatts. The coal tender was rebuilt from that of a Challenger steam locomotive, number 3990. The setup was, was numbered 80, but was changed to 8880 in 1965 to avoid conflict, with the then new DD35s being introduced. The late erosion and soot buildup problems encountered the earlier locomotives were, were, ma were magnified with the coal turbine. Grading coal into fine particles was also troublesome, but necessary because any oversized coal particles could damage the turbine blades. Unfortunately, the experiment was declared, was declared a failure and scrapped after spending only 20 months in service. The conventional gas turbines racked up well over 1 million miles, or 1,600,000 1, kilometers in revenue service, but the coal turbine prototype ran less than 10,000 miles or 16,000 kilometers for being struck for, for being struck from the UP roster on March 15, 1968. The PA control unit was traded back to EMD while the turbine unit and tender were scrapped at the Omaha shops. And so here we see Union Pacific GTL number 26 on display at the Utah Railroad Museum in Ogden, Utah, which is some of its home territory where it used to run. So if we take a look here, we can see that the first and second generation were built by Alco and General Electric cooperatively, 1948 to 53, and then the second, the third generation was built by GE. Uh, the model would be GE 101, the, the original 1948 48 demonstrator prototype. They were built between January 1952 to June 1954. There were a total of 55 of them produced, two of which are preserved. Uh, the rest were scrapped. The first generation ran on a quad B wheel arrangement, whilst the third generation ran on a quad C wheel arrangement. Uh, gauge was four foot and eight and a half or 1,435 millimeters. Tr have, it had four trucks. Uh, length was 83 feet and 6.5 inches or 25.464 meters. Uh, locomotive weight was um, 500,000 pounds of a prototype, um, 552,000 first generation and eight, 
849,212 for the third generation. Uh, the original engine was a Cummins 250 donkey engine. First used in the first and second generation. Copper Bessemer 850 engines were used in third generations. Traction motors included the GE 752E1 first and second generation and the 752E3 for the third generation. Safety system included the, the Leslie Twin Typhoon A200 air horns first and second generation as well as the Leslie S5TRF air horn for third generation. For, uh, maximum speed was 65 miles per hour or 105 kilometers per hour according to GE testing. Power output was 4,500 uh, 4, for 1st and 2nd generation, which is basically one unit, and then they combined two, which is what the 3rd generation was, they bumped it up to 8,500 horsepower. Tractive effort was 138,000 pounds, or 610,000 uh, in, whatever, whatever that says... Uh, career, they were all used on the Union Pacific. Um, the first generation did not have a nickname. The second generation were called Verendas. And the third generation were known as Big Blows and, bur and Bird Burners. Um, they did not have a long running life, unfortunately, because they were cut short. And the locomotives, I believe, that replaced these units were units such as the EMD DDA-40X. Well, actually, I take that back. It would technically be the DD-35A, first of all, which would be these units. These is what they, they originally replaced them. And then you have the DD-35, which was a B unit version of that. And then lastly, you have the DDA-40X, which was the biggest unit produced, with them being nicknamed Centennials. But that's, a, that's another video. Like I said, guys, um, I guess this is as good of a time as any. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And don't forget to hit that, hit that notification bell so you never miss out on another one of my videos. But until we meet again somewhere out there in the high iron, this is the L&M Productions out.